In his article, The Problem of Increasing Human Energy, Tesla introduced us to the concept of the self-acting engine, a machine that operates by the power that it abstracts from its environment. In the archives of the Tesla Museum, we found a draft of an article about this self-acting engine that was never published. Let's have a look what Tesla is trying to tell us here. The problem of increasing human energy looks like a philosophical essay. But in fact, it's a story told in analogies. Judging from the title, one could infer that it deals with making energy available to mankind, the sun's energy. The article can be divided into these parts. The heart of this article can also be found in the draft that we have found and deals with the subject in a little bit more detail. So how would the self-acting engine work? First, we need a machine that can produce a cold sink. Ambient heat will then flow into that sink. We can use this flow to drive a heat engine. This engine will then drive the machine that produces the cold sink. This may sound impossible, but it gets even stranger. Tesla wants to convert the heat that is flowing towards the cold sink into another form of energy before it reaches the sink. Thus, the sink remains cold and we can get this energy. This looks so obviously impossible that most people will not consider this as a real solution to the problem. But Tesla appears quite convinced. Pardon me for stating that you have misunderstood the purpose of the paragraph in my Century article, referring to a perpetuum mobile. My object in dwelling on it was precisely to impress upon the reader the impossibility of constructing such a machine. But what we can do and will certainly attain in the end, will be the utilization of energy in nature in such a way that for all practical purposes, it will be like having a perpetuum mobile. This result I am endeavoring to secure in my self-acting heat engine, which is an engine taking the sun's heat and transforming it into useful performance without the necessity of consuming fuel of any kind. How can Tesla believe that this is possible? First, he describes the unusual behavior of gases. When a gas is compressed, all the energy needed for the compression is added to the gas in the form of heat. Usually, this heat is quickly dissipated, but then, when the gas expands, the energy needed for the expansion is taken from the internal heat energy of the gas, thus cooling it down. This can be used to transfer heat from one location to another, cooling the former location. We know that this is possible, because that is how air cars work. Theoretically, we can produce this cold sink. So let's look again, and this time, at the problem of increasing human energy. If you put an empty tank in a lake, then water wants to flow in. We can use this flow to generate energy. If we then can convert this water into some other form, such as steam, which is vented, the tank will remain empty and we get our energy. But this too won't work. That is, it won't work with ordinary working fluids. But there's one gas for which it actually may work. Tesla's medium, electricity. Let's pause here and look at the timelines provided in his autobiography, the chapter dealing with the magnifying transmitter and the self-acting engine articles. While discussing the magnifying transmitter, Tesla talks about precipitating water from the air. One who studies Tesla's work will recognize that this is an analogy that refers to drawing electricity from our atmosphere. And thus, that the magnifying transmitter is the self-acting engine. Once you realize the many analogies Tesla uses, especially in his article The Problem of Increasing Human Energy, a wealth of information will open up. It's a bit too much to cover in this video, but you can read all about it in this book. Here's an example, burning nitrogen. Fertilized ground, 
so that plants can grow. Again, burning nitrogen. Fertilize the ground so that plants can grow. And this one. Without wishing to put myself on the record as a prophet, I do not hesitate to say that the next years will see the establishment of an air power and its center may not be far from New York. In his 1891 lecture, Tesla mentions the possibility of drawing energy from the medium. But what is the medium? This is the key to understanding Tesla's work, all of his work. Without this, you will not understand wireless transmission and you will not understand drawing energy from our atmosphere. You will not understand the self-acting engine and so you won't understand the magnifying transmitter. All electric effects are caused by this gaseous medium and knowing that it is a gas, you can send longitudinal waves through it and you can use it as a working fluid in a heat engine. So the trick we need to figure out is this conversion on the downward flow. Heat is a chaotic motion of particles. If you can direct that motion, heat becomes flow. We have a conversion of energy. It is a natural process that occurs in lightning. Here's to all of you who still believe that this is a magnifying transmitter. Your belief makes you blind to the most amazing aspect of Tesla's magnifying transmitter. The fact that it will run by itself, abstracting energy from the medium and make it available through the Earth. <laughs>